Okay, hello and welcome back to the uh, Land Rover Toolbox videos. Now I'll just let you know that we do have Land Rover Toolbox videos mugs available and I'll let you know where you can get them from after the video. Anyway, have a cup of tea, sit back and relax and we'll carry on with our welding tutorials. Welding can be a very hazardous to your health. There are possibilities of being poisoned by certain gases or fume poisoning. You can burn yourself from sparks or from hot metal. You could also electrocute yourself if the equipment isn't properly maintained. And you can burn yourself by radiation since the uh, welding spark itself gives off ultraviolet light. We'll go through this and I'll keep nagging you and showing you how you're going to avoid hurting yourself and other people. Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about PPE, which is personal protection equipment. And uh, with welding it is actually vital that you protect yourself. So what I have here is a full face mask with my old name on it. Well, that's what they used to call me at work. And basically this is a hands-free welding mask. It's adjustable, you have a headband and it's adjustable in two places so it can fit on your head or onto a cap depending on what you wear and you have your welding um, screen here which is a piece of glass but it's protected by two pieces of plastic front and back of the glass to make sure that it stays in good condition now these come in grades and this one if you can see it in there the number will have a number 11 on it now this is the amount of shade that it has on the mask and basically how it goes uh, the rule of thumb is because there are 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So it depends on the amperage your welding is what type of a glass you will use in your welding helmet and this is actually quite important. General rule of thumb is the stronger the amperage the brighter the spark is going to be and the darker you are going to have to have your glass in your helmet. So you'll see that I had a number 11 which is from 80 to 175 amps which is roughly a chassis welding sort of shade you need. The uh, glasses themselves are not very expensive however you need to keep them in good condition. With this particular mask you can take it out the rubber and I have been welding this without a protection sleeve on the outside of it and it managed to spatter the glass and of course um, spatter will actually melt into the glass. The plastic protection sheets that you get, make sure you have a good handful of them if you're doing a lot of welding because they don't last long. Now I don't know if you can see the spatter on there, that actually melts into the glass. Okay, just to repeat, we have and we use two plastic protectors, one on the front and the other one on the inside of the mask. If the glass shatters, at least the plastic will protect your eyes on the inside of the mask. Okay, so the second type I want to show you, full face, this is uh, an auto darkening, uh, speed glass as they call them. This unit happens to be solar powered, which means it charges a battery up in the unit while you're welding. This one here is a battery powered one, just the same, speed glass, however it is um, only a battery powered. And you have to be careful because if the batteries go flat, it won't work. The first thing you know is you start getting archi. This unit here is electronic and it has a few sensitivity controls on it. The ones inside here basically sort the delay out on how quick it will react to the arc being struck and going dark. Okay, if you can see them there, I usually set them about um, as quick delay as possible. So on the side here you have your darkness control and if you remember I've already told you that you have the darkest 13 to the lightest which is either 8 or 9. The good thing about these is they are fine tuned so you can adjust them perfectly to what suits you the best. Very good mask but a little bit more pricey. Okay, one thing I'll tell you about is the headband here. You have a soft cushion, which if you're welding a lot, you can replace them. Obviously, when you tighten this up and it's been on your head a while, it can actually start getting a bit sore. Parts are available from welding suppliers. 
Okay, so we've talked about welding masks, and this is only a part of the story. I'm sure everybody's got some hero stories about getting welding spatter, even in their ears, in their hair, on their arms. Uh, after a while, it becomes very tedious, and you really want to look after yourself, make sure you don't get burnt. So, basically, I'm going to go through the clothing that you wear, and this is from the boot upwards, of course. And the overalls I have here are actually uh, thick cotton, and these are welding overalls, which means they're not fireproof, but I can take them off very quickly, especially when I need to piss. And compared to these thin cotton ones, which um, I've had welding a spatter all over them. Now, I'll just get this into view for you. You can see the spatter all over them. Well, basically, what happens is whatever spatter comes off the weld will burn through your clothes. You can see the burn marks here. And I think actually this was also um, burn marks, if I can show you them, around about the crutch area. Okay, this is actually from grinding. Of course, sparks come off a grinding wheel and burn through your clothing. And it's not very nice if you're not wearing anything underneath in the summertime. Avoid polyester completely because it just melts. And uh, these type of overalls, which are dicky ones, again, they're a mixed cotton and polyester, and they're not very good. These ones are used for work. You can see they've got my name on them. Uh, these are not weld proof, nothing is, but they are heavy cotton. You want to get a uh, baggier size so you can wear a fleece underneath, especially in the winter. And of course, we have a special offer now, which is um, beanies with our logo on, and of course, fleeces with our logo on, which you can get from Arkwright. I'll show you at the end. Now, these things here, these are, I wish I'd have found these earlier because these stop your elbows from getting a welding spatter on them and your arms as well. Basically, these are welder sleeves and they are leather, or should I say they're very thin suede and they're comfortable. They're not like wearing a thick leather where you can't move your arms. So basically, you have your overalls on and these go over the top of them. Now, I would advise these if you're going to weld and you're welding up and onto your chassis, then you're going to need them. Okay, and I'll just get a pair of gloves here with your gauntlets. Of course, your gauntlets are going to help you a certain way. Uh, but with these uh, arm protectors, uh, sleeves, you can see that your arms are completely covered, which is excellent. And uh, welding spatter is not going to burn through there unless you lean on anything like a hot bit of metal for a while. So these are ideal for overhead welding and, uh, well, any position of welding. Okay, so the belly and the crutch area is very susceptible to having a grinder burn marks in them, as you can see here. And you can see why the overalls will be burnt from this video clip. You obviously saw in the video that I was wearing an apron. This is a thin suede apron, which is sufficient to uh, cope with grinder marks. Uh, this is available from Mark Wright at a very reasonable price. Now, I did go and treat myself to a suede, or they call it a leather welding jacket. This basically, again, is protection. And believe me, you do need it. You need to be sealed up in every area possible, especially the neck and around the cuffs. Uh, no exposed skin whatsoever. This jacket's good. You can reach up, which you don't actually have to reach too far when you're welding because you're not too far from your weld at any one time. So this could complement a pair of leather trousers, but if you're laying on your drive, doing your chassis, you need something like this. Right, so boots. Yeah, I like lace-up boots, and I particularly like these V12s that have got zip-up sides on them. But you always, always wear steel toe cap boots, whatever you're doing, because if you look at this picture here, you'll see that dropping something on your foot is not a good idea. The worst vulnerability with wearing boots is sparks going down through the top of the boot. Try and keep them covered whenever you can, and especially with riggers, get your overalls on the outside and not tucked on the inside, because sparks will go down there easier than what they do on a lace-up boot. And I can tell you because I wear both types. Right then, the head area, of course, we're going to have a helmet on here, but first what we need is something called a gouging hood. 
This basically is, well, I don't know how to describe it properly other than it is a bit like a, a nun's uniform, but this basically stops any crap going down at the back of your neck. So the whole area behind your head, obviously, is protected. And this is not only from spatter, but also reflected welding. Now, I wear a mask like this when I'm welding because when you're stuck in certain areas, it, this sort of thing will uh, help with the dust and some of the fumes. Just for general dusty areas, you can use a mask like this, and this is just for irritation dust. Or in uh, crappy areas, uh, basically it just stops a crap going in your face, and it also doubles up as a party hat as well when you need to. The idea ideal helmet system to use is an air fed welding system but you can see the price of this is nearly 400 quid you would of course in some areas in confined areas especially welding in tanks will have to wear something like this so you don't get fume poisoning however we're doing chassis possibly outside so it isn't too much of a problem however i do wear one of these masks a lot of the time basically because of the crap that's in the air especially in a workshop Right, so with all that, I've got a helmet and I'm just about protected. You can see that. Remember, as I said earlier, that you can get reflections off white walls, which can get you at the back and on the back of your head and your neck. The last thing, of course, is your welding gauntlets or your welding gloves. Now, these gloves are arc welding gloves. They're very thick gauntlets. They're not for TIG welding. These gloves here are no good for welding at all. They are basically just for moving stuff about. So don't weld with them because you can set a light to these. These ones are short um, welding gloves and they're okay. I use these um, at home. They're, they're fine for grinding and welding. And of course these ones are longer. These are welding gauntlets, which I'd advise you use. Now basically you're near enough protected. So this is the sort of setup that I would suggest you get some of this equipment to protect yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about goggles. These goggles are for gas cutting only, um, oxyacetylene gas cutting. They are no good for welding because they basically are too light. These are gas welding goggles and they flip up so you have a clear lens underneath them. Basically, they can be changed. The lenses can be changed on them. Now, these goggles, I'm going to talk about these because these are, for want of a better word, a ski goggles. So what I want you to do is just watch this clip and watch the sparks. Did you see that? I will actually stop at a certain point. This is the sort of area that your sparks are going to go even if they are controlled. So what I'm saying with these goggles, they are pretty good. They seal a lot better so you're not going to get sparks shoot up in any gaps like you would have with certain other grinding goggles, okay? I'd also advise get the best type you can get from welding suppliers and just make sure that you look after your eyes. These goggles here are for maintenance purposes. They're not really for grinding, so just look cool in them, but don't use them on a grinder. I'd just like to add, make sure that you look after your equipment. Any goggles, anything like that are broken, replace them. Clean them when you're finished with them and store them correctly until you need them again. I've basically made myself a little cupboard up here out of an old toolbox, which I've got my welders on and some of my safety equipment stored. Okay, so we're running with the big guys, which is Arkwright Professional um, Welding, Cutting and Painting. You can find them on Google, find their website. There will actually be a link for this down below in the description on YouTube. Now, welding and cutting, I'm going to show you where you can find the equipment that has been shown on this video. Basically, you're looking under welding and cutting miscellaneous. You then click through and you've got leather goods and um, welder garments or clothing basically you'll see the hood that's there welding overalls and even a quick release boots if you require now the hood that i explained that i had earlier flame retardant welding hood it is also called a gouging hood right so i'll just go back to a welding and cutting again 
over to helmets and protection and then click on leather goods so you'll see here there's actually more than what i've shown in this video but they're all valid welding gear i'm now looking at a set of these gaiters to cover my boots so i don't get spattered down or sparks down my boots i'd go for the panther range if i were you and you get nice badges on your equipment so you can see that very well here the panther badge is almost good enough to wear out on a saturday night as for the merchandise for the LRTV, a branded merchandise, go to merchandise and click on it and it will take you through to some of the merchandise that is available and all of these purchases here will help the LRTV to continue with making videos. So we're not expecting something for nothing, you do get decent equipment and warm clothing etc and the line will be expanding. So thanks for doing that for us.